I'm sure all of you people on the World Wide Web have heard of the creepypasta story, Squidward's Suicide. If you haven't, which I doubt it's the story of an intern in Nickelodeon Studios who views a disturbing and aired episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, where the story's titular character, Squidward, commits suicide. Well, if you have, I have to say that it's all true. Why do I say this? Well, I was that intern. After viewing the horrid episode, I was scarred. Those disgusting child murder photos have forever burned into my mind and will never, ever go away. After the incident, I took a two-year break from Nickelodeon-related productions. It wasn't until I got a phone call from the studio asking if I wanted to come back that I returned. They promised that the horrid episode was gone and disposed of. Anyways, we were called into the viewing room to watch a new episode of Spongebob called, Innocent Sins, which was a rather morbid title, but I didn't mind it, thinking it was a Halloween episode or something. We weren't sure who wrote, edited, and animated it, other than it was sent to the studios for viewing and finalizing. Popping the disc into the player, we hooked up the large viewing screen and pressed play. It began normally with the intro with the pirate painting yelling. Are you ready kids? With the kids gleefully shouting back. Aye aye, Captain! Well, except something weird happened. After the pirate said, I can't hear you! There was no response. The pirate simply said nothing to the silence and didn't even say woo as it zooms to the bottom of the sea and SpongeBob's house, as the happy-go-lucky sponge appears from out of the front door. Even though we thought the absence of the kids was odd, we continued on with the episode reluctantly. The episode began normally, with the title card and then showing SpongeBob snoring in bed, before his foghorn alarm went off. He turns it off and gets out of bed, happily saying, Oh boy, another day of work at the Krusty Krab. He gets out of bed, greets Gary, brushes his teeth, typical SpongeBob morning routine. He puts on his Krusty Krab hat, says goodbye to Gary, and walks outside. He then stops and looks over at Squidward's house, which looked decrepit and abandoned. Hey Squiddy, are you ready for work? The sponge asks. No reply. Just silence and a shot of the window. Uh... Squidward? SpongeBob walks up to the door and knocks, but it turns out to already be open creepily enough. The yellow sponge walks in, shouting out for his neighbor but there was no response or anything, just the eerie silence. He then walks into Squidward's room and gasps in horror. His pupils going small and his mouth agape. We only saw SpongeBob with that horrified look on his face, not what he saw. A shadow looms over SpongeBob, as he cowers in horror. Whatever it was, it pushes SpongeBob out the window and we get a first-person perspective of the poor guy falling out the window and to the floor with a sickening crunch. Blood formed around the dead sponge, as that freaking deep laugh from that god-awful episode is heard. The shadow suddenly gets red eyes and sharp teeth. The screen cut to black and then came back, showing us the crusty crab. Mr. Krabs was in his office, counting his money. He suddenly stopped and started to talk. I'm starting to get worried about SpongeBob and Squidward. They haven't been in work all day. He said with a worried tone. Uh, I guess I should go check on them. The crab then exited the restaurant, setting traps, so Plankton wouldn't steal the formula. He head over to the neighborhood where SpongeBob and Squidward live, and checked in their houses. He first went to SpongeBob's house. SpongeBob's house was empty and seemingly abandoned. As Mr. Krabs checked the place, he immediately stepped in something wet and squishy. The crab looked down and gasped it was Gary, SpongeBob's pet's nail, decaying and dead. His food bowl was full of blood. Mr. Krabs gagged at the sight and ran out, heading over to Squidward's. He went upstairs to the squid's room and looked over to his bed, gasping and gagging in disgust there, on the bed, was Squidward's corpse with one eye dangling out of his head, popped. His head was blown apart, brain matter splattered everywhere. I immediately began to have flashbacks to that freaking episode that ruined my life and haunted my nightmares. That serial killer was back. No, it can't be. I thought he was caught. Was he? The crab immediately dialed 911 and told them that his employee had committed suicide. Looking over his shoulder, he saw SpongeBob, gutted, limp, and dead. He was hanged by his intestines and his eyes were gouged out. His throat was slim and bleeding. 
Police cars surrounded the house and ambulances removed the bodies from the house. Mr. Krabs, Sandy, Pearl, and Patrick were there, bawling their eyes out. Mr. Krabs was throwing up and being comforted by Sandy. The next day, they held a funeral for both Squidward and Spongebob. All the residents and Spongebob and Squidward's friends were there, crying uncontrollably. I even began to tear up myself, but told myself that it was just a sick messed up prank, even though deep inside, I knew it wasn't. After this, everyone went home, but it stayed on the open coffin of Spongebob and Squidward, as that same shadow from before returned and grinned evilly. The episode then ended with no credits at all. Just a black screen. After this incident, I left the studio permanently. I should have never returned. This messed up episode will forever haunt me, along with that Squidward's suicide episode. <laughs>